again, and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthwaite. Hi, I'm Carla Garrick. And it's beautiful out. It, this Can it just stay like this awesome. for another eight weeks? Um, <laughs> it's like just a, maybe 80 is the high today. It's really good. It's been helpful for me. I've been trying to work on the deck, and then of course it's going to rain this weekend. So when Dan, like, I'm at a standstill because I need him. Not that I'm not capable. Of ripping boards or cutting things, uh, but I don't want to do job. it. Like, well, I mean, and I want him to do part of it. So I, he, you know, he has to work. And then there's things because we're going to the mayoral debate tonight, and then we're going to uh, watch the presidential debate, debate tonight. So there's tonight. Why do they make it so late? Because it's in Milwaukee, so it's starting at eight in Milwaukee. Okay, because it's and like it's nine, nine o'clock here. here. Yeah, I was. Kinda so like, hmm. is that right? Is that the way it goes? I don't know. It I just can't do time. Late. Uh, it does I do seem know late. AFP's got a, a watch AFP's party. AFP's got a watch going. party at Murphy's okay. Manchester, and then I think the Manchester Greater Manchester Republican women are doing something out in Murphy's Bedford. I just couldn't yeah. think of where in Murphy's Bedford was going to be a good space to watch it. I mean, they, they do have big screens in those big that rooms, but I just out. have a hard yeah, time believing that. You know what I mean? It, yeah, this sounds. It, bad it's going to be eh. unless there's a TV, and I doubt they're going to put the TVs in the bar on. You know, and not everybody wants to watch the debate. I don't know. I'm kind of like at the stage where I'm like, are they going to tell us anything that's true? Is it going to make a well, difference? Well, it'll be interesting. So I did see a picture, which it'll be interesting. So there's eight in the debate. Okay. Um, and then they start at the center based on the poll on their. Poll numbers? Yeah. Okay. So it's um, DeSantis and Vivek dead center. Oh, wow. Right. And I was Go like, Vivek. Here is me. I was like, <laughs> and then, um, and then I forget. Then it's like Nikki Haley, Nikki Haley, Chris Christie, Tim Scott. God, I can't remember. Oh, my, no, no, no. It's Nikki Haley and Pence. Um, Tim Scott and Chris Christie, and then Doug Burgum and Asa Hutchinson, according to this I mean, picture, anyway. So, uh, I don't even know who all's running. I uh, just, uh... It's interesting. I mean, I want to see how, I, you know, like, we have pet friends who, like, are highly annoyed that we haven't picked who we were supporting and I'm like, can I see? Can <laughs> well, I see? Some of us have picked, but it's a Democrat, so that's not oh, really no, popular I mean, either. Can, we just, can I see a debate before I commit right. to somebody? Like, right. oh, come on. And honestly, why should we have to pick this we early, don't. right? Like, the whole point is that people can present themselves, present their ideas. Do they have ideas as opposed to just, I don't know, dissing their opponents? Right. Well, right? that's the other thing. I said that. We were talking about that yesterday. Um, I said, so I feel like, and I, I'm not even going to name names because I don't want anybody to say, well, see, blah, blah. Um, some candidates seem to spend the majority of their time attacking other candidates rather than talking about the problems and solutions. Which I think is sort of where we are with politics. And um, I think it's when they have political operatives. And I, from and what I understand, certain candidates' game plan for the, this evening is to pivot from attacking person A to pivot to attacking person B. Oh, wow. So we'll see how, if that's what the way it goes. Cause I think if that's the case, my, my gut opinion, you know, people talk about how to win the Republican primary, you know, and I understand the Trump factor and everything. And that's that there's nothing you can change about that. Like that's its own, its own entity <laughs> and it's going to grow or shrink on its own and nothing anybody's going to do is going to change that. It could change dramatically in the next six months. This is not that. Right. And, um, but I do think candidates of those eight will kind of start to define what their goal is. Like, who are you? Are you about something? Are you, or are you just a mud slinger? You right. know, Chris Christie's going to get up on the stage and sling mud. Well, I'm that's pretty sure because that's what Chris Christie can does. Do I mean he's track record um, in the state he's from is right. hideous. And you know, and then he on doesn't the really side, instill a sense in me where you know, I'm like, oh, this is a healthy person who should be right. guiding us. Tim either. Scott's gonna be, you know, Tim Scott's gonna be super nice. Mike Pence gonna be super. You know, these people aren't gonna be different than who they are. <laughs> Mike Pence is gonna be milk toast. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, I'm like, it, it, Mike Pence, he's like, he's like, uh, I, I mean, there's a stand-up comedian I follow who always makes fun of him because he's like, all he is is like handsome. He's just there. He's just there. Yeah. You know. Um, so anyways, that's tonight. So anyways, the, the, I love the weather because I can get out in the morning and, you know, when you're building a, putting new surface on a deck, we bought this great Craig jig that hides the screws. Oh, cool. Okay. 
I felt like we were never ending. Like, I'm like, okay, oh, we need... Because, you know, there's one... There's, oh, because now you can endless. hide the scripts. Well, and, and you got to put, put them in every scripts. joist and every board. And, you know, like, it takes takes forever. And you're like, oh, my God, it's never... But it is close to ending on that step. Anyways. Um, so before we came in, because I know we're going to end up talking about those damn dams. Because damn dams. We, and we to, have to come up with a good name. Because last night when I was tweeting, or not tweeting, because I'm banned from Twitter, but when I was on my Facebook, my last account... Uh, <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm so dangerous. Uh, I, I was trying to come up with like a catchy, yeah. you know, like damn gate or, yeah. you know, like something, but I don't have it's it the yet. the damn dams. Um, but before I get there, I wanted to mention, so as I was parking today on Elm Street here, um, I pulled in next to the prevention van, whatever the heck that's called, with the Narcan on the side of it. And um, there were three individuals, one of which was the director, Andrew Warner, who's being paid, I forget what, $70,000, $90,000 a year, him and these other two women standing on the sidewalk, literally peddling Narcan. Now, first, I'm going to say a couple things, because there's always the rules for me and then the rules for thee and that also. So I can't stand on the, on sidewalk, the sidewalk and sell pharmaceuticals and, no, and or just, give away I can't, pharmaceuticals. I can't even give away food. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, people, yeah, or lemonade. people can't stand and give away food, but these guys can stand on the sidewalk stationary and peddle Narcan. I mean, these are big yellow bags filled with stuff. And they were just randomly, like, people walking by, would you like a Narcan thing? And people were like, no. And one guy did say, I don't really think I'm the best suited person to deal with that. Like, which is the kind of how I thought. And they didn't say anything to me because maybe, they, you know, I might have one of those faces that they remember. But um, <laughs> they didn't offer it to me. But all I kept thinking was, what what would you propose I do with that? Because I know nothing about Narcan. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not trained to resuscitate. You know, I... That's not, my, that's not my role in life. So it's interesting when I, I forget if we talked about this, but I was at Rite Aid a while ago. I think we did, where I said even the tweezers are now under lock and key. And, <laughs> you can't uh, get anything anymore and for I, the so, so I asked the lady who works there, who I know, uh, you know, why? And she said, oh, we are actually also starting to get those thefts where people come in at midnight, you yeah. know, and empty out the store. Jesus. And then she said, which was her reason, she said, I don't do the overnight shifts Cause anymore because it's scary. dangerous and the companies don't want anyone to engage. So they're letting the crime happen. So from an economic perspective, we have this knock on, right? Someone goes, oh, it doesn't matter if you steal because you're insured. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that works for one round of theft. Then right. as we all no, but when, if you crash your car or do something, then, and then your the insurance prices all go up go and everybody up. complains about that. And then your insurance premium goes up, which means the prices have to go up because in order for someone to turn a profit, they have to pay all the things they have to pay. And so it's just a knock-on effect. But one of the things she said is, oh, the other thing she's horrified about is they now do uh, Narcan over the counter at Rite Aid. And she's like, that has attracted a very everybody. sketch right. element to the store. Is this the Rite Aid over at my CMC? Yeah. Mm, that's unfortunate because it's a really nice little Rite Aid. Yeah, I mean, you know, they fixed it up and, and, and it's, I mean, it's just all of this. Is right, it's, it, it incur, it, so instead of you video, and I being able to just go into a store and shop like normal adult humans, so forget everything's got to be changed to accommodate this. The, the this, thieves yes. and the, the, the malcontents and right. the vagrants yeah. and the junkies. Yeah. Like, like we are actually yeah. creating a society yeah. that protects and indulges yeah. the, the, the people who are not actually contributing. So I don't know what that is, but we got to fix it. Um, I don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss the damn, damn conversation. Right. But we, I'm good. I would, would have talked about that. I met, was chatting outside with a guy. Uh, we can just, it'll, it'll be the beginning of next week's show. Um, just trying to, you know, he's nice, everything clean. Can't tell if he's got a mental issue. Maybe has some little tweaky bit of a mental issue, but I don't understand why this particular gentleman couldn't have been working. So I don't. You know, know what I mean? Like he's, he's telling me he sleeps in the shelter, and okay, but you're perfectly clean. Like I'm talking, you got uh, kept noticing his teeth and thinking, "Damn, you got super clean teeth, <laughs> super super clean teeth, like dentist clean teeth," <laughs> and his clothes were perfectly clean. So there's a piece missing. Like, I kept trying to figure so out what it was. So I saw this video before we switched to the damn dams. I saw this video on my uh, Insta feed, and it was, I mean, it was actually, I mean, it, it really grossed and sketched me out. So there's this new drug, and I don't know if this is, like, just 
government propaganda nonsense to scare people. It could be, it could not be. But I have seen people actually in that physical condition. So it's a drug called Trank. It is a new animal tranquilizer Jeez. that they are now mixing with the fentanyl. It's in 90% of drugs in Philly where apparently it is coming in and being pushed out. There was a video where they just edited together uh, just people on the street mm. where they are um, – they're, they're like nodding off, but they'll stand and nod yeah. off. So it's this very strange thing where you go into this fuge state. They're calling it a zombie drug, right? And so um, it's pushing up the overdoses. And also the reason I bring it up is it doesn't respond to naltrexone. So it doesn't respond to the things that we've now introduced. And we've so, so now we have this like slippery slope. And categorically, I don't think any drug should be illegal. But what should happen is we should be like, you shouldn't be doing this stuff. It's right. really bad for you. Right. Why are you making bad choices, right. right? Like banning it doesn't help. That just Right, well apparently the banning market. it doesn't help because there's, otherwise there'd be no drugs. Right, magically, right? Like if we, yeah, if we nobody ban, would have drugs because it's an, it's illegal. I mean, there are no guns in Chicago, right? Because it's illegal to have right. a gun in Chicago. Right. There are no guns in San Francisco because right. it's illegal to have a gun there. Hmm. So maybe prohibition doesn't work, right? But this drug is that sounds scary, super nasty, and I I don't want it to come here. I don't want to see it. I mean, it was actually so gross. Like, I don't know why Louis <laughs> made me. <laughs> On Sunday night, we watched, I hate horror movies, but we watched <laughs> it. We watched a horror because, you know, he, once in a while he's allowed to pick. And I was like, fine. And I was just kind of on my phone doing other things, right? But it was one of those ones where it was like some, I want to say it was uh, the guy, uh, Russell Crowe and he's some priest and it's, you know, some, it's just creepy, you know, and it's some devil story like Rosemary's Baby, yeah, yeah. that kind of vibe, right? So when the devil possesses him, like they get these you're weird like, arms you're like, That's and what stuff, it is. right? So they, yeah. And this video Remi was that, 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 that it'd be people on the sidewalk or they'd have like a twisted leg and they're kind of lying on their sleep. It was not it was, okay. Not a good it's, thing. It's not cool, guys. We're going to have to come up with a better solution. But part of it starts with us saying we're not going to tolerate this. Right, right. It's actually okay to be like, this is not acceptable behavior. If you want to be a functioning person in society, then the first part is you have to be a functioning person. Or at least you don't get the benefits at, of society without contributing. At least want to be a functioning person. Let's. Can we even start with that? Like, have some sort of desire to change the the right. trajectory that right. you're on. You know, like I understand it's probably not easy. I understand. But I mean, you still have to want to change the trajectory. Right. You, can, you know what? I'm more than willing to help somebody who is trying and failing and trying and failing and trying and failing as long as they actually have a trajectory that they're, they want right. to achieve. Right. But if your trajectory is, I just want to get be closer to where the drugs are and I want to be able to sleep wherever I can so that I can be closer to where the drugs are, that's not the trajectory I want to support. No. So <sighs> now to the damn dabs. Trajectories. <laughs> so I, I dug up, a, I printed a little bit. I brought the, right. the printout. So, so backstory yeah. for folks. Tammy and I both went to this meeting that was down at St. A's yesterday. So this is basically what's going on is shenanigans. Well, that are gonna... it's long-term issues so so it's basically a, a problem that's been 20 years in the coming that is now seven months away from a catastrophic issue i mean it's the short way to explain it um it, it was i don't know if this was your experience but i've gone to a lot of things at St. A's yep. over the year. It's the most people oh, I've this was very ever well attended. Seen. So that room that they do, you know, the room that's got packed. the presidential pictures and stuff in it, it was packed. There were there people outside watching. Only. Yeah, I sat on the, the thing underneath the TV cameras. Um, I mean, it was, I've gone to a lot of things. Yeah, it was most, very well. Like, I was surprised I couldn't find parking. Yeah. Or we like, parked you know. down on College Street because right. I was like, oh, there's no parking there. Um, and so I think that's a good sign because why are people there was involvement, engaged? Yes. Because what they're basically talking about, I mean, this is the most uncharitable way to describe it, is they want to drain the three dams that uh, supply our recreational water experience in Manchester and Goffstown because of the fish who haven't lived here for 100 years, because the federal government 
is saying we should do yeah, it. Yeah, so little little background on the meeting. So it was brought, put on by the Department of uh, Environmental Services, DES. Um, there were three gentlemen there. I believe Mark Sanford is the... Um, is it Sanford? Sanborn? God. Ma- Sanborn, thank you. I'm like, Mark Sanford, that's not him. Mark Sanborn, I think, is the director of DES, but I'm not 100% sure. And then some other gentlemen who are Corey involved. Corey Clark, yep. who seemed quite competent, yep. a younger engineer. Yep. They, they all, I mean, I'm, I give them credit. They, they, they know what they're talking about. And no, I'm, they don't. They couldn't even answer the following question. What is your annual budget? Like, they literally so couldn't answer that question. The, the, not the, good enough. The, um... The, the purpose, like, so there's three dams. So I, I did dig this up off of the Goffstown website. So the Piscataqua River consists of three branches, the south, the middle, and the north, which run through the south-central New Hampshire communities of Deering, Francistown, Lindenboro, New Boston, Ware, Goffstown, and Manchester. It has approximate length of 63 miles that is free-flowing for 96% of its length. 4% of it is, I forget what the word is, but it's basically controlled by the dams. Um... There are three dams. There is the Hadley Falls Dam, which if you're in the downtown village of Goffstown, is where the pumpkin regatta, you know, that body yeah. of water between the bridge and the mill. That's What the- did he call it? The stupid annual thing you guys do. No. <laughs> um, but that dam that's near the mills. Right. It is um, owned by the state of New Hampshire. Because all of these dams ultimately are owned by the state of New Hampshire. Most of them are leased to power companies. To do hydroelectric right. power. So that dam is the one that's, that one's going to go. That, that, that basically a takeaway. They, they were pretty upfront last night. They were like, look, we're not here to sugarcoat things. We're not here to tell you what you want to hear. We're here to tell you what, this, the, what we're facing and what we think we might be able to you know, like how we can shift the cards to make this work better for more of us. Um, the Hadley dam has, um, a power station, but the power station is owned by the developer, the building, the powerhouse to the apartment development that's going on right there. Now their concern with the Hadley dam is the disrepair. They said, this is the worst of the bunch. Um, they're concerned that if it were to go, if there was a flood, um, it would damage so, not it, the mill buildings would be okay, but there's an apartment building over on the on the left hand side that the foundation it would could be thing. Um, they did say all of these three dams were in really bad stage. That stayed they're in the be, the worst. You know they got a p- category. This is the worst category. So just to add, so those categories uh, is high hazard, significant hazard, low hazard, non menace hazard, and. Uh, In New Hampshire, there are currently 61 high hazard dams. This is how they define it. They say it is a dam that causes, could cause possible Possible loss of loss of life. Now, they are basing that, I mean, I would guess both on sort of historical how old it is and all of that. But they also said last night that they're basing most of their assertions about the safety of these things on modeling. Yep. Now, I'm just categorically going to say the following things. Modeling is the equivalent of Nostradamus predictions. It only works as well as whatever your data going in is. Mm-hmm. So as we have seen with climate change science, If it's garbage in, you will get garbage out. So if you're putting in the wrong things to model, then you will get an answer that'll make things look maybe the way you want them to look in order to tell these guys want anybody on the stage last night wanted these dams to be removed or failed. I didn't get the impression that they were doing that. No, I got the impression that that for 20 years they haven't done their job, and now well, they're I'm bringing a guess problem that none to of those, us. Right. I, obviously, this probably should have been addressed 40 years ago, and for the past 40 years. I was talking with some folks next to and me. And I'd be less mad if he didn't say, well, we didn't kick the can down the road, while also saying that the last dam commission was 20 years ago. And I'm like, you did kick the can, right. the, guys. the department did, but those people working there now didn't. None of them are possibly old enough to be working there 20 years ago. So now you've got this group of um, people working for DES who are stuck kind of between a rock and a hard place. So there's the three dams. There's the Hadley Fall Dams, which realistically is going away. That pond area where the regatta, the pumpkin regatta, is probably going to go back to its natural water course and be more of a stream than a, than a body of water. That's a... I, 
that's just was my takeaway from last night that that almost is a because that they've been discussing that one since 2007 so it is on the cusp of something's got to happen there then down below it you have the greg falls dam which is the one at the end of glen lake so that one um is the biggest electric producer that one produces 3.5 megawatts of electricity um the company that does the electric is not going anywhere has no interest of leaving they um they are willing to put in money they're just trying to maneuver the federal requirements um that dam generates about two hundred thousand dollars a year for the state of new hampshire so i'm presuming and as a big presumption that that money all that money that comes from those dams is going back to des in which case it should be used towards the repairs i'm a hundred percent sure it goes that probably money to the general is going fund. somewhere yep. where so, it is not being used on yeah. what it was supposed to be then, used on, hence putting us in this position. That one um, obviously would probably have the biggest impact downstream and impact the hundred and some odd homes on Glen Lake. And then the, the one that's, I don't think that one's going anywhere. It's Greg Falls need, you know, the federal, gov federal government's requiring these fish ladders because apparently the top priority for the federal government under the Biden administration is fish ladders. Um, not people, not, um, not generating uh, uh, hydropower. I mean, you would think that they'd want to be generating more clean power, but there, it, it, there's this conflict. I so mean, I literally said to the lady sitting next to me last night, I was like, so we care more about fish right then so and everybody property owners yeah. taxpayers yeah. um the fish ladders which also he didn't want to answer that question they're claiming so a fish ladder is basically a, a lock is a short yeah. way to think about it that'll help a fish get up only four percent of the fish get through get through so it's a it's a lot of money right. waste of time effort money so Yes, a program from our federal government. Yep, yep. gotta love the and, federal government. Um, and they cost between four, four and, and seven million dollars or something. Or, yeah, or maybe or it was six four and twelve. And a lot, many so, millions. So, so that's what it costs when you're doing business with the government. I bet you yeah. everyone in that room at St. A's could build a fish ladder for like sixty so, grand. So, by the way, the Kelly Fall Dam is the one that's underneath the Byron Bridge, the yeah, bridge the on Kelly Street. Arena. That's the one that is actually in Manchester. Um, interesting that I don't really think I saw anybody from Manchester, any like state reps, reps or like aldermen no, and or, I was like, wait, so like, wait, are we the ones that, okay, whatever. Well, so I mean, it's like they, we take care of that park that already, dam, so yeah. Um, does it generate anywhere as near as much power? I forget, 0.02 megawatts or something. Yeah, it wasn't a to, lot, like, seven, it, grand in, seven grand in money um, to the state. Um, but that one is the one that they're like, I think the group on the stage was most like, that's the one they're trying to figure out how to make this work. So the power company, Green Mountain Power or Green Mountain Energy, whatever it is that has the power station there now has said, we're done. They're not going to spend 4.5 million to meet the federal re government requirement to do this fish ladder. It's not profitable for them to continue to, to generate power there. Now there is interest from the people who Eagle. run the, the Eagle power, whatever that is involved in the Greg dam to take over this one. Now the interesting thing that more than one person was like, wait, did you say that again? Especially the guy Allard, Mark Allard, who was standing next to me. Um, if, there is no power being produced. If there is no hydropower produced at a dam, then there is no requirement to have this federal license. And if there is no federal license, the, the dam is dictated by the state of New, New Hampshire, Hampshire, not the federal government. So it's the federal government who seems to be saying we must build these, these fish ladders and we have to do all these things. Now, they did say... If they get federal grant money. So this really is a problem chasing money. It's yeah, part of how I'm looking at it. If they can get the federal it. grant money to rehabilitate the Kelly Fall Dam, which is what they want. That's what I got the impression was what they were hoping to do because then it doesn't impact Namask Lake and the 180 homes that are on that lake. Um, but it's not just, but, just to be clear, it's also not just the property owners. I walk yeah. that lake 
at least three times a week yeah. where I pick up your trash yeah. and get rid of the homeless. Oh yeah, there's You're lots welcome. of stuff. So, so like it's actually like a, a it's 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 a integral part yes. of the culture In, and recreational and life of West Manchester. I, I, unless somebody brought it up last night, because I was like, well, I'm fairly confident. I'll go back and look at Electric Street because there's only a small number of houses there. But I bet I'm gonna guess that Manchester taxes those houses on Electric Street higher than on a non-waterfront oh, street. Yeah. And I'm sure Goffstown is taxing Yeah, the people, um, the people about on that the lake. Last night. Um it's a but, view tax. So so these town these municipalities are taking in money and then doing other things with right. it rather than saying, hey, we should probably be taking this extra money and putting it towards helping make sure these dams are fine. But what I was interesting that people I don't know if people think about it. So Let's say they p take out the Kelly Falls Dam and the Mask Lake goes away and all those waterfront properties now become just regular properties, right? Because there won't be waterfront. It'll be right, a stream. Right, because it literally becomes a, a stream. stream. So, so they'll the, be able to sand So back. these people, well, there'll be all sorts of debris because that, they've done this before, but there'll be <laughs> all these people whose property values will go down, say, $100,000. So guess what that means for everybody else in the village of Goffstown? Your taxes, Your taxes are, gonna are gonna go up because those people's taxes are gonna go down because their their values go down. So this isn't just impacting the people directly on the water, it impacts the entire town of Goffstown. And from Manchester, it's gonna impact, you know, Manchester as well. Um, so these are I mean, this is an issue this everyone is a big should problem. get on board is, with. And I think the solution is going to be, or at least I commend yeah. you. Uh, <laughs> I, I I asked you asked Early, a real question. I <laughs> asked a reasonable question at the start. So so we flipped our roles because I actually asked the like, what is your budget? Uh, how did we create a yeah. $414 million hole? And what do the fish ladders yeah. cost? And we got some rambly, nonsensical yeah. answers to that. Tammy, who was towards the end, was like, um, Can we just yeah, say screw can we you just, to the government? Can we well, just I say mean, screw the federal well, government? Well, I kept thinking was that. And I was like, go Tammy. But it's like federal <laughs> regulations. And I'm like, wait. New Hampshire sends more money to D.C. than we ever get back. And now we've got to beg the federal government to help us fund the repair of dams, which me and Dan were talking about it. Dams probably do fall under the purview of the federal government because otherwise you'd have somebody damming up a river upstream and then we wouldn't have any water. You know, it is like it's kind of like the interstate system. So I can understand why the federal government's involved with the safety of people impacted by the dams. But we're talking about fish ladders. Nobody's talking about the eagles or the or the turtles or, or the, the beavers or the otters or any of these other species of animals. Just these like herring and whale something. I don't even have so, some. So animal. actually, I did laugh. Also, the, the lady who was sitting next to me said. Uh, I actually worked with her when we did yeah. the, the Parkside stuff. She said, you know, my mom, who has spent, yeah. you know, 85 or whatever years in Manchester, she's like, my mom was telling me when they had to walk to school way back in the day, they had to carry sticks to beat the eels back Jesus. because they would come up from the stream. So maybe we also don't want that habitat right. coming back. Maybe we want the eels and whatever. And yeah. also, finally, who gets to decide what the habitat is? So why right. does the federal the government get to habitat. say it's 200 years ago, but we're like, well, this has been this way for 100 years. And like we have, as you say, yeah. all this other uh, animals and natural habitats. So okay, we got the <laughs> we got the warning. Okay, we'll talk. We can talk about that more next week. Um, I'll do some more research because I am kind. Of, it's an interesting. I think we need matter. to bring some numbers um, too because I feel like there has actually been mismanagement. Maybe. We don't make a half a billion dollar hole on oopsies. Okay, that's all we got. We'll be back next week. Bye guys. Bye.